It was a day that started like any other. Darkfire and Shadow Moon were playing chase in the city, and the wall was freshly patched up from the previous battle against CCCPC, also known as the Red Panda. The leader of a vicious Crownlands clan, currently holding King's Landing, we had our remaining armies hidden in the Bannon Hills of the North, and Moria, one of our most loyal bannermen, was sent out to scout the area. Due to the previous days of heavy fighting, morale was low and the troops were mostly licking their wounds. The Red Panda had destroyed our elite spearmen vanguard when they valiantly held the line to allow our survival. Many men lost faithful friends and dear companions that day. The infantry troops were now sent to the front line. While truly untested in battle, they at least presented a sturdy line of defence. Close to us was the great castle of Winterfell, and strangely enough, our scouts reported no presence of either Northmen or any other clans nearby. Why would such an important castle be undefended? There simply had to be something nearby. As a rule, every clan hid themselves in the shadow of a great castle or trade hub, both for protection and supplies. Without either, a clan could not hope to survive. While reorganising the troops to ensure that they got the welders of rest they so direly needed, a faraway horn echoed through the barren hills, like a desperate scream for help, bouncing off the Great Wall itself before reverberating into our camps. Many stood up hastily, knowing the signal could only be from one person, one source, Moria. Moria had stumbled on a great frozen lake just north of Borsgate, and found his armies surrounded by a vicious northern band of hedge knights, calling themselves Phoenix Rising. While most armies were shielded and were staying low to protect themselves from the elements, Moria knew that time was of the essence, and swiftly sent out scouts to find weak spots and unprotected armies. Most just stood there, watching. Then suddenly, from the shores of the lake, a vast army suddenly appeared and swarmed towards Moria. While the battle raged, Moria's signal had allowed my army to mobilise and rush swiftly to his aid. My army came from the side and broke through the enemy's lines, charging on the unsuspecting flank of the leading Northman commander. When the commander's armies returned, he found his camp destroyed and his rearguard obliterated. Moria was able to hide most of his troops. As a rather small bannerman, he'd kept just enough hoops to scout. The successful battle against Draco boosted the morale of my soldiers. Chants of victory and heroism echoed through the camp once more. Invigorated by the success in battle, we stood again united, fallen friends remembered as heroes. Not half a day later, while falling back, my troops were awakened once more to the sound of horns of Moria echoing through the snow-covered hills of the north. Thankfully, still nearby, we returned, only to find another army of Dracos, with a thirst for vengeance charging upon Moria's scouts once more. Without remorse and somewhat baffled by this stupidity, we laid waste to this foolish attempt at revenge. The Phoenix will need plenty of time to arise from this total defeat. The morale of the story is thus. A trap is easily set. Never fall for something that seems too good to be true. There might always be a predator lurking in the distance to take advantage of your unwise attempt to enter into the annals of eternal glory. This is The Trap, a Gotwick story by Forgotten Games. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and share it with your alliance. It means an awful lot to us. Thank you.